I began this project with one goal. Build a Hackintosh, or a Crappintosh if you will, with respectable specs that could handle the average person's day-to-day -day tasks, but also to make it as cheap as possible. What I did not expect was to build a $70 computer that could outperform the $2,000 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Yet, here we are. I've only been involved with PCs for the last two or three years, so I don't really have an old machine that I could cannibalize for this system. So I decided to start out fresh. I gave Crappintosh a $100 build budget, and after spending a ton of time on Craigslist and eBay, I was disappointed in the crappy hardware that $100 seemed to be able to buy. But then I remembered that in the United States, all universities, most local governments, and most public school systems run surplus warehouses. Uh, my local college, the University of Utah, replaces all of their computers after five years. It doesn't matter if they're still working, it doesn't matter if they are powerful, five years and then they replace them. And they sell those used computers off to the public. So I paid them a visit and there were tons of HP 6300. A quick Google search uh, let me know that that motherboard was Hackintosh compatible. And the machine packs pretty respectable specs. There was an Ivy Core quad-core Intel i5-3470 CPU, which is clocked at 3.2 gigahertz, and it also had four gigs of DDR3 RAM. Now in 2012, when this machine was new, it cost over $1,000, and I bought it for 30 bucks. Five-year-old computer, 30 bucks, not bad. It did come super dusty. This was used in a hospital, I think, and it was just so gross how dirty it was. So I vacuumed it out, and I also replaced the thermal paste. Okay, so I had my motherboard, my case, and of course my power supply, but the computer didn't come with a hard drive for security reasons, I'm guessing. So I had to find an old 80 gigabyte 5400 RPM drive on Craigslist for free, and I used that to install macOS Sierra. I actually was able to install the OS successfully, but the hard drive was so slow, and the internal Intel graphics didn't work on macOS Sierra. Apparently Apple dropped support for Ivy Bridge graphics in El Capitan, and I didn't want to have to run an old OS, so I needed to buy an extra GPU. Now, one of the downsides to this machine in particular, this HP, is that it uses a proprietary uh, power supply and a proprietary motherboard, which means there's no VGA power support for heavy-duty, powerful graphics cards. So I had to get a GPU that was efficient enough to run solely on the power provided by the PCIe slot. Now, there were a bunch of cheap, crappy cards for $15, $20 that would have done the trick, but I found an NVIDIA GTX 750 Ti on Craigslist for $35, and that's actually a really good deal. They're normally around $80 to $100 used. Now, no, it's not the greatest of GPUs, and it did cost a little more than the lower-end cards, but I figured that it was the best performance that I could get without moving to a different card that was more expensive and required external power, and for the extra 10 bucks that this card cost over the cheap, crappy ones, it was worth it. Lastly, I decided to buy a broken SSD for $5. Now, why would I do this? Well, older SSDs, especially those from Samsung and Crucial, had this weird thing where if they had a power loss, like a surge, or if your power went out and your computer shut down unexpectedly, the drives would disappear from the system. And they wouldn't show up, even in the BIOS, until you cycled the power through the SSD in these weird 20-minute intervals. So most people are not going to look that up online, and they naturally assume that the drives are dead when they're actually not. And so, since I was way under my $100 budget, I figured I'd gamble up $5 on a 250-gig Samsung SSD and see if I could get it to come back to life. And sure enough, after half an hour of cycling power through it, the drive came back alive. I was really lucky. So the whole machine cost me a grand total of $70. Okay, so that's cheap, but it doesn't mean anything if it doesn't work well. The hardware is all super macOS friendly, much to my surprise, and I was able to get everything working perfectly without too much hassle, even iMessage works. Furthermore, it's not as quiet as a real Mac, I'm sure you can hear it purring in the background, but it's also not loud. It's a pretty moderately quiet workstation. And because it's from 2012, all our modern creature comforts like USB 3 and gigabit Ethernet are present as well. The real question is though, how does Crappintosh actually perform? Well, I'm completely blown away. It works shockingly well. Crappintosh does a really good job doing basic day-to-day -day stuff like email, web browsing, 
video, but so does everything, even our smartphones nowadays. What did surprise me is that this machine is actually a little bit of a beast doing video editing. Using the Final Cut Pro 5K Bruce X benchmark, holy crap, that is a tongue twister, Crappintosh outperforms the 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar by a fair margin. Now, sure, Crappintosh has a quad-core CPU and the MacBook Pro is only dual-core, but don't forget, this is a $70 computer. Believe it or not, this video you're watching right now was even edited on Crappintosh. Yes, a 4K video edited on Crappintosh, a $70 computer. In other benchmarks like Cinebench and Geekbench, Crappintosh really holds its ground and performs quite nicely. I even tried gaming on it, and it kind of worked. <laughs> Old games like CSGO and even Tomb Raider from 2012 actually run really well, with a 60fps average at 1080p ultra settings. Now, newer AAA games like Mafia 3, which just came out on the Mac last week, are much worse, and Crappintosh is essentially unplayable with the frame rate averages in the low 20s at 1080p, even with low settings. However, all of the games run in macOS on OpenGL, and the beauty of a Hackintosh is that you can boot into Windows. And the games run much better in Windows because they're using DirectX. So Mafia 3, which was total crap on macOS, achieves a 40 FPS average at 1080p with high settings on Crappintosh. Really, really impressive. Much better than macOS, and honestly, much better than most modern game consoles. I suppose the biggest problem with this machine is the four gigs of RAM. I have to think that eight gigs of RAM would be much better for gaming and video editing performance. And, you know, that's something that's easily upgradable down the road if I decide to do that. But yeah, I'm blown away. This $70 computer runs macOS remarkably well and could easily be a daily driver for most of you watching this video. Turns out Crappintosh isn't so crappy after all. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you didn't like it, that other button seems to work okay too. Please comment down below and I'll try to answer to every question and response. And as always, stay snazzy.